but we don't write good money in the chat box now yeah now yeah now uh, i request everyone to write good money in the chat box okay now as it it will be recorded So I hope everyone has written. Uh, well, students, your results came, I guess. Huh? Your results are out, or two, three days back, I have, uh, saw the messages. No, not yet. Okay. It was fifth sem, I guess. Acha, because not for your specialization, I guess. Acha, non CBC yes. answer has done. Okay, okay, cool. On CBCS. Yes. Wait, I'm joined from my cell phone as well. Yeah, so let's begin with the lecture. Okay. Everyone can see the screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, last time we started with second module. Okay. And probably uh, today I'm, uh, let's see. Uh, if it gets completed or uh, some part will remain okay we did with uh, all this uh, second model consists with all this okay make versus buy decision or market versus hierarchy uh, what to identify a core process whether the from in make versus buy situation one by one okay so uh, before uh, going with the second module we start uh, we discussed this about the netflix which is an online streaming platform which uh, streams uh, movies and uh, TV shows. But initially, Netflix was a small company with a, a small, even had a small retail outlets, and they used to supply uh, TV, uh, uh, sorry, movie CDs on rental basis. And uh, people used to online on phone, phone, and as well as on the internet. Before Netflix, there was a blockbuster which used to sell. Uh, 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 video cassettes which we used to put it in vcr so they were the leaders in that time but when cds came uh, and blockbuster had a, a, what, a huge customer base in many countries throughout the world and 
they had a kind of a different setup for every country uh, to meet their local needs to meet their local uh, language movies they had uh, different needs uh, then uh, later on blog uh, when cds came into uh, the new technology blockbuster couldn't adopt it very well and they didn't uh, allow customers to take home the uh, uh, what do you, video cassettes for a longer time okay there was a late fee kind of a thing so all this thing all those uh, things were captured by netflix and they were overcome uh, by netflix and that's the reason the netflix uh, took over uh, and got very famous uh, among the customers so blockbuster went out of the market and along with that one more company called as redbox which launched they had a kiosk uh, at many prime locations in the city they could uh, the customer could just deposit one dollar and one dollar here and get the movie cds for a day for a night maybe okay then they used to return it so this is how uh, these two companies netflix and uh, redbox came and uh, they removed blockbuster from the scene and uh, Net netflix was uh, the netflix and redbox were mainly they were uh, what do you say capitalizing on the supply chain okay this is what we discussed then why they went out of the market because of the strategic fit blockbuster strategic fit was initially fine but later on netflix and redbox uh, took over and as there was a change in the technology they adopted that change and they brought in new supply chain for the for their business then we when then we discussed about outsourcing wherein we talked about nike which is uh, a kind of a virtual company because they don't manufacture uh, their products they don't have any manufacturing plants they don't sell their products as well they send sell it uh, through they have given it uh, to the franchise outlets so they only take care of about designing and brand management okay rest everything has been outsourced so when a company does an outsourcing when the company buys a product when a company makes it on their own okay so that is what is uh, okay it is what is a question to decide okay which which things to manufacture which thing to buy okay so for that uh, we discuss some of these okay. so in this case uh, apart from ford motors rest all uh, companies have outsourced some of their activities okay and which of the activities they can outsource which are not their core processes or which they are not and not good at they can outsource all those things but which they are good in doing or which is good they are in manufacturing good in designing good in marketing or uh, good in uh, maybe assembling or uh, anything which they are good into and there that is their core process they will focus on that and rest everything they can outsource so to identify which is the core process there are two routes business process route and product architecture route so in business process route okay before going that we discussed about xbox uh, which is a microsoft owned company okay but the entire assembly of xbox is not manufactured by microsoft it is manufactured by uh, flectronics microsoft only manufactures the software part of it because microsoft had uh strength in manufacturing of different operating systems different softwares it doesn't know how to manufacture uh, hardware properly okay so they can uh, they can enter into manufacturing of hardware but it will take time and it will be a risky and it will be a risky part okay so that's the reason uh, microsoft has outsourced manufacturing of the entire assembly of xbox then the business process route in which customer relationship and brand management which will be for that the that is the core process of nike rest everything they have outsourced then product innovation is hp hp uh, hp has uh, laptops hp has mobile phones and so they focus more on product innovation and they focus more on manufacturing so that is their core process the rest marketing and uh, supply chain and all uh, the those activities Uh, the logistics part those activities will be taken care by someone else and then the supply chain management we have our old friend walmart okay 
um, and uh, DMART and uh, Amazon and Flipkart. Okay, all those uh, concentrate more on supply chain because they don't manufacture product much and they have a low kind of a customer relationship. They only um, just message the uh, message or brand building is not that much in these. Okay, then we had different, another one which was product architecture too. We'll break down our product into different parts and we'll see which is the part we manufacture and which, uh, for which part we need to focus on. Okay, so that thing has been uh, identified and the that core process which we are into good, which we are good at, we'll focus there. Okay, for that uh, example, I've given a dismantled piece of a mobile phone. So whichever take a battery, no one manufactures battery is always given to a third party for manufacturing as per the mobile's requirement, the size, length, weight, um, the plus, uh, the what do you say the amperes and which thing a mobile phone manufacturer is good at it it will do that okay just for example uh, we i have given you the manufacturing of tata cars the engine which is the core part of a car is is not manufactured by tata it is manufactured by fiat and tata purchased uh, that engine from fiat so as per their car specification definitely but they kind of purchase it they have outsourced it Okay, because Tata doesn't have much expertise in manufacturing of diesel engines. Okay, same goes for Maruti. So for these uh, two types, we identify core process there. Actually, what we will do, okay, the remaining thing we can outsource. So that what we will do, that is the identification of the core processes. Then um, market versus hierarchy. Why? It is a, uh, what do you say? It is the extension of mark, uh, make versus buy decision. Whether we should go and buy from the market or whether we should manufacture. So we uh, are doing analysis of three things. First was economies of scale. In economies of scale, uh, if there is a benefit, okay, if we can uh, get a benefit of ordering, um, because the supplier may be supplying or manufacturing for many different companies. So he can supply it very efficiently or maybe he has the technology to do that. Okay, or uh, he can deliver us anytime we need. But if we manufacture, we will take time. Okay, and it will be not that cost efficient. So it, if it is good for uh, outsourcing, uh, we have economies of scale, that is the per uh, cost of per product the fixed cost per product will go for example if i am manufacturing uh, i may manufacture 100 goods 100 products with each product uh, costing achha, this example i had gave you uh, if uh, if you 10 people are traveling from belgaum to bangalore the total cost for going there is 10000 rupees okay so in that case uh, per person will be uh, in that bus only 10 so per person cost will be 1000 suppose that same bus the next time i'm people over there or 30 people over there okay so if people are going in the bus the cost of uh, from belgaum to bangalore will be 10000 itself in the bus but now 20 people are paying that 10000 so each person will bear 500 so that per person cost will go down if i'm manufacturing more Okay, so per product cost will also be come down. So if that is the case, we will definitely outsource. But suppose if we are producing in-house, then we'll have an agency cost. Okay, even if we don't want uh, or our technology is not that good, still if we are doing it in-house, then we will bear some agency costs. Okay, and but if we outsource, then we'll bear transaction costs because we need to be in touch with the... Uh, uh, the supplier, the outsourced part, we need to bargain, we need to incur, some costs will be incurred. So this is what we did in the last class. And we need to control it as well. Okay, so.
Okay, something has happened on my computer. Give me a minute. Yeah. Okay, fine. Okay, so uh, something about incomplete contracts. Okay, before going to uh, one of the main thing uh, in today's lecture. Now, when uh, when there is a outsourcing decision or when there is a uh, some things which we are going to buy uh, with our specification okay and our buying process is regular if tata is buying cars also uh, buying engine for its cars then they will have a contract with fiat okay so what will be the specification tata will say what uh, what we need and fiat will say what will be the cost when we, we can deliver when you need to order how much you need to order in at one time do okay so tata will also say something they will also say something so uh, they will have a memorandum of understanding okay well, this is a legal term memorandum of understanding is we uh, both the parties will try to understand each other's requirements and each other's benefits and uh, each other's problem so they will identify something okay this party will try to understand that that party the other party will try to understand this party so both the parties will try to understand and make a memorandum of association then they'll start working on it and finally they'll make a contract a legal contract okay, what this party is going to deliver and what that party is going to deliver okay it will be then that contract will be bounded by law okay if one of the party cannot deliver as written in the contract then it is a breach of contract okay they have broken the contract so the other party can go to the court so that is how a contract is and a memorandum of understanding is okay you must have uh, even in our college uh, even in our college some of the companies you might have seen mo mou signed with this company mou karke okay mou is just a short, uh, short form of memorandum of understanding okay that means what one party will be delivering and what other party will be delivering it's just the understanding between them okay so as we go further with the mou we'll uh, get into a contract when the actual business starts okay even with mou we can have a business but uh, when the contract has been made okay so when when the contract has been made that contract should include many things okay it should include uh, exactly what the uh, both the parties are planning to give okay one such example i have give you so we will discuss one by one itself okay first is uh, about uh, incomplete contracts see both the parties need to uh, need to give what they want and the other parties should also give what they want and how they will deliver but sometimes it is a common sense kind of a thing where uh, what do you say uh, or else the managers who are getting into that contract they might have um, a common sense issue or a, a normal what do you say a limit, a limited information will be there okay about the technology because the contract will be signed not for one or two years it will be signed at least for uh, 10 to 15 years like that so tata is not telling uh, fiat to uh, to manufacture its engine for just for one or two or five years okay it is a very long term contract maybe 15 20 year contract so within that time there may be a change in technology there may be some information which will not be known at that time though it will be uh, as and when the time passes as and when the years passes the there will be a change so there will be a lack of maybe information or technology okay and some things uh, wherein uh, where the vodafone gives the billing process to uh, atos so atos can hide something because it knows the technology very well and vodafone doesn't know that uh, that technology vodafone is more focusing on their core process which is network providing so so providing network they don't know some of the technological part of uh, at us origin so there can be a, uh, a misguiding of information can happen okay so any information which is not that known by other party can lead to bounded rationality or else it is very difficult to measure the performance of the other party whether they are performing good or not or they say 
okay and uh, the asymmetry in information okay if the technology is there if they are developing some softwares and the other party doesn't know they are working very fast something like that. okay so one two okay two examples i wanted to give uh in our company uh so in our company uh, we were a team of eight people okay uh, mostly uh, there was uh, it was uh, our work was basically done on the tools which the company was providing and some of our work was done on the excel okay we used to download something from tool and we used to modify that thing in the excel uh, microsoft excel then for that modification uh, we somewhat required maybe 20 to 20 to 30 minutes if we do thoda aaram se then we'll take half an hour to modify that thing then uh, me and one of my colleague we together we developed a kind of a macro okay you understand macro we that means if uh, if i download something okay and i click a button in an excel okay or else i just give a command to the excel that modification will be done automatically by the excel within a matter of one second just one or two seconds the excel will modify everything and within that time uh, the modification modified version of that sheet will be ready so the process which was taking us 30 minutes or 20 minutes that was done in one or two seconds okay but this we didn't inform anyone not our team not our heads okay so they were un under the impression that okay 30 minutes has been used uh, for this process so our 30 minutes was been was been used but actually we were after that after developing that macro actually we were uh, consuming only one or two seconds so basically no time so our entire 30 minutes got saved but none of them knew it okay so that is what uh, we they were thinking uh, if you can imagine there are two parties okay the heads and uh, we so our heads were thinking they are using their 30 minutes for this so we don't you know, we don't will not give some any, uh, another work within that 30 minutes but we knew that we were only taking one or two seconds for that so that is a kind of incomplete contract you can say Okay, the other party is thinking, okay, they are working for 30 minutes, but this party knows that the work of 30 minutes has been reduced by us. Okay, but we'll not inform them because we'll get some other work. Okay, this is not good, but uh, we did it in our company. Okay, just a small, <laughs> not something relevant example, but one, uh, one such example uh, was when there is a language issue or something like that. There was a comp American company, uh, uh, airline company okay uh, that company uh, not air uh, not this uh, airbus it was a different one okay a small airline company was there that airline company had given a uh, manufacturing of those wings and uh, the body of the aircraft to a japanese company and in the contract it was written that the finishing of the airline the so upar, which is finishing here okay like the car finishing the bonnet and uh, the this things with the shine which it shines the finishing should be mirror like okay there should be a mirror like reflection for the finishing okay what we call in hindi okay it should shine like mirrors that should be the finishing okay it was written in the contract when the American company gave it to the Japanese company, this contract, and when Japanese counterpart gave it to their employees, their employees saw mirror like shining. That means they started making the metal in such a way that if you stand in front of that metal, you should see your image in that metal. Okay, mirror like that. So for that, uh, they started developing. Uh, such kind of uh, metals and uh, started uh, smoothing the metals in such a way th that the it should it should be like mirror itself if we stand we should see ourselves in the in the metal in the aircraft uh, on the aircraft body so that was that they thought and when they informed the american counterpart it uh, that it was it is 
becoming very difficult for us to make the entire body within the you know, price which we have agreed on. And then uh, there was a meeting with American, pa American and Japanese people. Okay, what what is happening? Why uh, it is not mirror like shining? Why you are finding it difficult? So then they explained. The Japanese people explained how we are doing it. Then the American <laughs> managers were shocked. Oh, no, we didn't so uh, set exactly like mirrors. We just sh said it should be very shiny like mirror. Okay, not exactly like mirrors. Okay, so th that was the thing they misunderstood or. Uh, it is because of the language barriers, you can see. Okay. We generally say um, cold as ice or um, hot as fire. So it doesn't mean like that. Hot as fire, it doesn't mean like that. But uh, there is a, a terminology and language we, we use like that. So sometimes it happens in contracts as well. Uh, shine like mirror. Okay, so they literally, uh, literally considered as making a mirror out of a metal. Okay, so some things that cannot be written in the contract. Okay, so that makes contract incomplete. Okay, so this is one of the thing. And when a contract is made incomplete, okay, there are certain situations, uh, three such situations, and we'll go to the uh, next part. Uh, presence of uh, relationship specific assets. Okay. This means, uh, okay, we'll do one by one. Um, poor coordination affecting supply chain performance and leakage of strategic information resulting in adverse supply chain performance. Okay, we'll do one by one. So in presence of uh, relationship specific assets, a firm will able to provide the efficiency of transaction and reduce the cost in the process if the supplier can invest in spe specialized assets. These specialized assets are known as relationship specific assets. Okay. What this means is, uh, if I'm outsourcing something to some company, then that company should develop some technology or build some assets in order to supply us. So that assets which they are developing or that technology which they are developing or that facility which they are creating, that will be specific for us. They cannot use that facility to give it to someone else. Okay. So when that is the case, for example, uh, FMCG companies, okay, FMCG companies, uh, they are the uh, day-to-day manufacturer of day-to-day -day products, okay, which are which is fast moving. So the full form goes uh, fast moving consumer goods, okay, which is fast moving, like uh, all your groceries, which are fast moving, okay, all your soaps, and, uh, uh, soaps and shampoos and all those all those stuffs when they get finished off within a month or a two month or a three month immediately ho jate. okay so all those things can be considered as fmcg companies they're consumer goods not your washing machine or television or electronics they don't get finished off very fast okay they get worn out they get damaged okay uh, and at least uh, for more than a year you will be using those things okay a washing machine maybe you will use it for uh, five to eight years refrigerator you'll use it for maybe for eight to ten years okay so they are not fmcg they are not fast moving whereas your uh, groceries your eatables your uh, bathroom stuffs everything toothpaste toothbrush you will use for a few months so these are the fmcg companies so in fmcg companies generally the packaging is done by someone else the manufacturing is done by someone else right as i've told you see on the back of the cover so when the manufacturing is happening and packaging is happening by someone else then that packaging company should be there very close to that company okay and they should develop a kind of a logistics uh, and a route in which the truck will come they, they will be delivered it should be very close nearby okay the manufacturing of the product and the packing and packaging of the product should be very nearby so that uh, that uh, they'll develop the facility uh, uh, related to that so because of that company they have developing that facility same goes for microsoft microsoft uh, just now we discussed microsoft is a software company but they are manufacturing xbox 360 so the assembly of the work uh, of the xbox 360 has been manufactured by the flextronic so when microsoft is thinking so we should increase the production though then 
that decision will should also be informed to flextronic that we are going to increase the production that means you are going to you should be manufacturing more uh, assembly parts okay so my, microsoft is planning to do an advertisement and because of those advertisement there will be a demand for xbox so because of that demand for xbox the assembly uh, of that xbox is required so for more assembly of the uh, xbox 360 we should inform flextronics okay so to ramp up the production to increase the machines to increase their facility of manufacturing to increase their manpower in manufacturing so whatever the repercussions are there if we advertise we as in microsoft advertise what will be uh, what will be the flextronic need to take care of okay so specific uh, relation will be built up a specific factory will be built up if that is the case so same way for scorpio also mahindra requested uh, their suppliers to uh, modify something okay and our kind of a midas okay is kind of a software which is built by mariko so whoever is a distributor of a mariko okay they need to follow this they need to install they need to put up a computer and they need to hire a guy who will take care of all the in and outs of the mariko products in their distribution center so specific uh, distribution software was created by mariko and all the distributors were told to install that software put up a computer and do it like that okay so their distributors or their uh, which they have outsourced the distribution system they need to adopt some technology okay okay then a poor coordination is just that uh, both the uh, coordination between both the parties is very essential okay. uh, so one of the example kind of a thing a software drink uh, firm spend enormous amounts of money on advertising campaigns and to ensure that the campaigns have desired impact they need to they need the cooperation of the local bottlers at the implementation stage what this means is suppose you are a pepsi company you are advertising that there will be a bottle a small bottle of pepsi 5 rupee bottle okay which will be uh, of maybe i don't know <laughs> 25 ml or something Okay, so there will be a small bottle of Pepsi which costs 5 rupees. Okay, and it will be available uh, in the stores. Okay. So something you have advertised. Okay, taking uh, maybe Ranbir Kapoor and maybe uh, Deepika Padukone. You have taken those and you have made an excellent advertisement that the 5 rupee bottle will be available. You saw the advertisement. The next day you go to the market and you just ask for 5 rupee Pepsi bottle. Then the, Shopkeeper says, hey, 5 rupees ka thodi aata hai. The minimum cost of Pepsi bottle is 10 rupees. Okay. Then you say, Are, ad, ad mein to aya tha hai. Okay. No, no, it is not available. Then you go to some another shop or you go maybe next next to next day, next to that day. Then you never find that 10 rupee bottle. Okay. And you, again, you next day you see the, an advertisement. But after seeing the advertisement, you will tell your friends and family, Are, ye, 10 rupees. 10 rupees ko what advertisement they are saying that 10 rupee bottle is not available itself and what is happening there is no use of advertisement if the product is not available in the market so who is making that product available in the market the software company has given the bottling to the uh, local bottlers okay they have outsourced now if local bottlers doesn't adopt that change immediately if there is a poor uh, communication there is a poor coordination between the company and the bottling plants then there is no use of advertisement they should dev first of all they should develop okay before the advertisement starts uh, on the air okay before the advertisements air on the tv they should have the facility to have a small bottles and fill it and get it distributed into, into the market then the advertisement makes sense okay if there is a lack of coordination like that then it is um, that advertisement is will, live, will be of no use. Okay. And also it should not happen that the bottles are available and advertisement is not there. And advertisements comes a uh, month, one month after. Even then the, uh, they should, there will be uh, no use as such. Okay. You have not told the bottlers when to launch that bottle properly. So there is a lack of coordination. Okay. So if that coordination happens, then it will affect the supply chain performance definitely okay 
the next thing is uh, leakage of strategic information. Okay, now that is the, that is a cool one. Now, uh, as we said that okay, one of the example was Verok Engineering, uh, which is the manufacturing of automotive parts. Okay, the car which has been manufactured by uh, automobile company. Some of the parts which are not that um, important. Okay, every car, every part is important, but it is not their core process. So they have outsourced it to Verok, Verok Engineering in Pune. Now Verok Engineering manufactures automotive parts of Tata. It manufactures automotive parts of uh, this Maruti Suzuki as well. Okay, for uh, Volkswagen, Skoda, and for uh, for uh, many car companies. Okay, Ford, Fiat, what long? Okay, chote chote parts they, it manufactures. Now Verok knows what kind of technology or manufacturing in Fiat cars is required. It knows what kind of technology Tata uses. It knows what kind of technology Maruti uses because they have shared some information to Verok for manufacturing of their automotive parts. Now that information of Fiat is there with Verok, which can be leaked to Tata or to Maruti. So there is a chance that that information can be leaked out. Okay, so there is a chance okay so that that chance will may have a repercussions it will have a loss for the uh, party it will not generally happen but if uh, if such thing happens there is a chance of a loss and the leakage of information of any important information if it is leaked to some another company then there will be a, a huge loss okay not the calculated loss but leakage of information should never happen okay so there is a company called as benetton Okay, Benetton, Colors of Benetton hey, is there in Belgium, I guess, uh, opposite civil hospital, United, uh, United Colors of Benetton. Okay, so Benetton is a company, they are into apparels. Okay, they are manufacturing uh, shirts, trousers and uh, t-shirts and all. So they are into that company. So the dyes and design decision, basically the design of Benetton is, which is the critical information. So they don't give that uh, information to these uh, to the manufacturers. They keep it with themselves. What will be the design? And when the time comes, immediately they'll tell it the manufacturer, and then they'll change the designs or the dyes. They will keep it for with themselves because that is the information, uh, critical information. If ever they are doing that, same goes for Nike as well. Nike, the core process of Nike is design. How the shoes will be. Okay. What quality of the shoes will be, okay, that can be leaked, no, not an issue, but the design before it is launched in the market, that should not be leaked. Even if we have a very uh, dedicated and motivated and very loyal you know, manufacturing plants, okay, manufacturers, still the information should not be out okay, so that it ca cannot be leaked. Okay, so that is the three cases in which the contracts and uh, when uh, when it is happening with the third party, what is what are the things? So before, actually, any doubts in this? Okay, so that was the uh, in this uh, make versus buy. Um, from the cost perspective, I've just made a graph to explain you. Okay, uh, I don't think it is there in the syllabus. Okay, but just for an explanation, okay. kind of a graphical explanation. Okay, we have a cost on y-axis and a quantity on x-axis. So, for which quantity, what will be the cost that we are going to calculate? And we are going to analyze whether we should make the product or whether we should buy the product in terms of cost as uh, cost aspect. Okay, not in the terms of uh, product innovation or uh, maybe process. Imagine this. Okay, this is maybe this is uh, what do you say? A buy buy decision and this is a make decision, or else consider this as a make decision or this as a buy decision which at this quantity imagine at this quantity the green is higher and red is lower 
at this quantity. At this quantity, uh, we will take a decision that if um, red is buy, then we'll definitely buy the products. If I'm an, if I want this much quantity, I'll buy the products because the cost is low. And at this quantity, the uh, make the make will be low. Okay, just like that. Okay, till this point, when I'm uh, when I'm desiring this much quantity, then definitely at this cost i can make or or else i can buy which, which is zero okay so below this quantity i'll definitely go with the red one okay and and above this quantity and at this quantity okay, i'll uh, only take cost as this much and i'll not uh, make this i'll definitely buy but after my quantity starts increasing i think that uh, I need more quantity to sell in the market as my quantity is increasing then at this quantity okay uh, the make will uh, that if i manufacture the products myself then the cost will be less if i buy the products the cost will be more okay just a representation uh, for your understanding okay so if this is the graph uh, this is the curve or this is the line of make and this is the line for buy so before this point or if my quantity is less than this quantity then in this case i'll go with the buy decisions i'll buy the products from outside but if i'm manufacturing more products than this then in this uh, quantity phase uh, rather than uh, buying the products which is costing which is costing more i'll make the product in house okay so on the basis of cost i can do that because if I'm manufacturing very few products, then my per unit cost will be high. So better I'll buy the products from outside. If I'm manufacturing bulk, uh, huge products in bulk, then that buying decision will be a costlier one. So better I'll make. Okay, so this can be uh, it can be interchanged. Okay, anyone can be a make decision, anyone can be a buy decision. But just on the cost aspect, we need to figure out. Okay just an explanation then we go to make versus buy continuum okay in this uh two more things are there whether to make uh, or whether to buy okay one is a tapered integration tapered integration is i have given something to the third party for manufacturing along with that i also start manu i also start manufacturing Okay, I am making it and I'm buying it from outside. Both I'm doing. Okay, why we will discuss it. And second one is collaborative relationship. Okay, in this, uh, we'll have a, such a kind of a relationship. Okay, I'm not going to make that product. Definitely, I'm going to buy the product. But that buying relationship with the third party or the outsource party is such a strong relationship that we'll build a kind of a partnership itself. Okay, uh, informal relationship itself that they will only supply to us, we'll only buy from them as a specific relationship. Okay, just uh, and it leads to alliances or joint ventures. I've mentioned just like Maruti Suzuki. Okay, Maruti is not mainly manufacturing the cars, it is the manufacturer, main manufacturer, and the designer of the cars is Suzuki. And but the selling of cars in India will be done by Maruti. So they have made into such a good joint venture that in India we know Suzuki cars by Maruti Suzuki. But the manufacturing and the designing part is mainly focused by Suzuki and the selling of cars in India is mainly focused by Maruti Udyog. So both the companies have made us such a relationship that we recognize if all the cars of Suzuki by, by the name Maruti Suzuki itself. Same goes for many different kinds of, like Hero Honda was one of the example. Now, Hero has moved out and Honda is working separately. So we we have Hero Motors. No, we don't have Hero Honda bikes. We have Hero bikes. Okay. So this, we'll discuss one thing. Tapered integration, uh, it's like I said, uh, we have outsourced something. We are buying from them. But along with that, we are also making. Okay. This happened for a Toyota. Toyota, when uh, uh, when uh, the cars were mostly mechanical, okay, mechanical parts, mechanical engineers, cars. Then 
after certain times after certain years uh, the mechanical parts were getting somewhat replaced or some new parts were getting added uh, into the toyota cars which was electronic parts okay so power windows power steering was uh, included then and some on the on the dashboard of the car the uh, we have some music systems for for acs we had electronics uh, electronic adjustments and many such things were uh, getting into the cars so toyota thought of initially toyota thought of um, getting the electronic requirements done by denso okay denso was an electronic company so whatever requirement of toyota was there electronic requirement denso was taking care of it then later on toyota realized that this electronic requirement is going to increase as the car is moving uh, and the technology is growing fast so along with mechanical thing we need to focus more on electronic thing as well so so along with importing or so uh, buying parts electronic parts from denso toyota also started their own manufacturing unit of electronic parts so they were buying from denso and also they were making in house also so dono bhi kar rahe the okay they were in sourcing the electronic parts and also manufacturing of electronic parts so this is called as a tapered integration tapered integration will make also and will buy also okay and the next thing was collaborative relationships okay so in this the firm the company hai they treat the supplier as the partners and they generally are there for longer period of time reasonably long period of time bahut saalon tak 20 50 years ka relationship with them just like a fiat and tata and fiat and maruti they are supplying engines to tata and uh, so they'll have a good relationship and as a, for example maruti suzuki also and again if i give an example of toyota they you remember the toyota, the toyota corolla car from the first lecture or from the second lecture many suppliers are there just for one car okay so toyota takes 80% of the required components from the market the remaining 20% which they feel is the core they manufacture themselves and for that matter for, for the product also okay one second okay so they take those uh, they manufacture their 20% uh, in house and 80% which is not that strategically important parts they outsource it okay so for that matter not just for cars for everything else okay so there is a kind of a kairetsu system which the toyota called kiretsu or kairetsu it's a japanese word okay so here is toyota they take electronic parts from denso they take some another part from toyota inc they take some another part from toyota rica toyota then um, the koyo and some bank as well so everything is so much integrated and toyota have such a long term relationship with everyone that they have built a relationship so toyota toyota in corp has a relation with denso they supply something denso supplies to them something toyota supplies to toyota Yeah. and toyota does supply to denso as well for their requirement koyo ko isko isko so for everyone there is a strong relationship okay and it is meant for uh, long term to very long term so they don't they are not same companies they are different companies but they have developed a relationship with the supplies in such a way that it will be lasting long okay so that can also be done okay so this is what uh, what is about then the supplier selection will go to so before that uh, i want to tell you a story of how mcdonalds failed in iceland okay definitely related to the syllabus uh, mcdonalds everyone know it okay iceland uh, can anyone tell me where is iceland iceland kidhar hai it's in asia it's in europe it's in americas north america south america 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 uh, no it's a small country uh, situated in europe 
okay this is greenland this is uh, uk united kingdom and this is germany france yes over there so a small country situated in europe is iceland okay it is not full of ice it is full of green country okay there is a thing uh, that this is greenland okay it is full of ice there is no green trees over here okay it's uh, it's full of ice but the name is greenland this is a full of vegetation uh, country bahut greenery hai but naam hai iceland okay they might have just interchanged it because of uh, world war during that time they have interchanged so the small country in europe iceland karke okay mcdonalds failed here okay you all know mcdonalds yes we know mcdonalds so mcdonalds is an american joint okay uh, which is very much it's like a, a home food kind of a thing in uh, america so it's a well known brand and it has presence uh, in almost more than 100 countries in the world okay maybe one more than 150 countries uh, in the world it has its presence but in iceland it failed okay it launched um, uh, in a great deal okay bahut famously launch kiya tha and uh, the people adopted ice uh, the mcdonalds the icelandic people adopted mcdonalds very well they started and they knew what a burger is and um, what are french fries and what are what are different kinds of products which the mcdonalds offer uh, mcdonalds there offer even hard drinks okay alcohol also is been served in different countries you know mcdonald doesn't serve mcdonald does serve uh, hard drinks in the foreign countries but it doesn't serve hard drinks in india because of some cultural uh, differences mcdonald is not allowed to serve uh, alcohol in india okay but in foreign countries it does serve so everything was very much pretty much welcomed okay but uh, something happened in uh, 2008 there was a global financial crisis okay it hit throughout the world even in india it was hit but india could india had a, a good cash economy so they didn't uh, that, that didn't had any much impact in india in 2008 also some of the uh, many of the countries uh, their uh, bank they were dependent on banks very much so that that countries had a hit in during global financial crisis because banks didn't had liquid cash to give to their customers but india the, uh, there was not much problem because we are kind of a cash rich economy matlab cash rehta hai hum log ke paas ghar mein rehta hai ye okay we are not that dependent nowadays we are dependent on bank because um, because of online transactions but uh, in 2008 we had a uh, huge cash deposits in our home for, even for business purposes so during this time okay there was the currency of iceland got depreciated that means uh, if if i can buy a bread uh, in 20 rupees now okay maybe this after financial crisis maybe a month after one month uh, the same bread will be costing 40 rupees to me okay so the my value of money has been gone down so when that was happening mcdonalds faced the heat okay when mcdonalds uh, because mcdonalds whatever they were manufacturing in iceland they were importing it from germany they were importing their uh, meat from germany their buns from germany okay all their raw materials was coming from germany they had they had kind that kind of a supply chain where they were sourcing products at very lesser cost so they have developed their supplier base in germany and whatever the raw materials were required by the mcdonalds iceland those raw materials were coming in from germany but when the price or the value of the money of icelandic money went down they started um, facing higher tariffs or and higher impact, import prices higher tariffs as in higher uh, what do you say customs okay when when anything comes from any outside a country we need to pay some amount to the customs okay as a customs duty as an import duty so because of that higher import prices and higher tariffs mcdonald's profit plummeted mcdonald's ki profit as a full niche gaye they had a good planning that we will set up a supplier base uh, we'll have a excellent supply chain we'll get procure materials from germany and ye sab bahut acha plan tha but when 2008 financial crisis hit because of higher import prices and higher tariffs mcdonald's uh, went out of the market 
and it was said that for a kilo of onion imported from Germany, I am paying an equivalent uh, of a bottle of good whiskey. It was McDonald's Icelandic franchising owner. Okay, that means one kilo. Uh, what do you say? Onion खरीदने के लिए from Germany. Uh, the cost of that buying of one onion is kind of in uh, paying a bottle of a whiskey in Iceland. Okay, that was the cost which uh, the McDonald's was bearing, and they could not cut off very easily because they had a contract with the German supplier. and they could not just start uh, getting procured material from the icelandic farmers because they need to work all over okay so they were in a, such a kind of a situation so because of that iceland closed and this tommy's burger joint which was a local uh, sh- local chain food chain it got it got their feet strong in iceland and mcdonalds had to leave iceland in 2013 or 2014 so what so this is a country where uh, the mcdonalds failed in the market just just because of the reason they thought that they will have a efficient supply chain by importing goods from germany but because of the global economic crisis they uh, it hit badly mcdonalds so mcdonalds went out of the icelandic market this is one of an example if uh, if 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 you are interested you can search how a company how big companies get don't get accustomed to uh, somewhere jaise ki in in india for example dunkin donuts okay there is a good uh, donuts uh, ka chain hai okay uh, we don't have in belgaum definitely uh, mad over donuts dunkin donuts karke hai okay uh, so this is a kind of a, they are they provide donuts okay but dunkin donuts is kind of a, a breakfast joint okay so breakfast ke liye ek joint bana hai but in india we generally have breakfast in our home and only then leave our home we don't just leave our home nahi to mummy hum log ke piche padte are nashta karke ja karke okay so have breakfast and leave the home generally so that's the reason dunkin cannot survive in india and mostly people used to go dunkin donuts uh, college students and uh, people from the office they used to go in the evenings so in evening snacks was not that available uh, in dunkin donuts they only focused on the breakfast so one of the reason why dunkin cannot adopt in india because the culturally the, it is different so whenever a company is uh, entering into a market they may have an excellent supply chain management system but they should also check the culture of the company now the culture of the country okay so one of the things so okay uh 9:30 so, okay now we will complete the sourcing strategy okay definitely i am not going to complete uh, the module today okay much much is remaining okay sourcing strategy is okay i'll just read this forms by a large number of components and services and of course not of them not all of them should be handled in the same way the popular portfolio approach developed by kraljik classifies items based on the importance of the items in terms of value of purchase and associated supply risk in the supply market okay what it says is when we are sourcing materials when we have given the materials when we are buying the materials from our suppliers when we are sourcing from them all the components are not of same value okay koi cheez some components can be very uh, very costly some components might not be that costly some components will be very important for us to uh, and for that components very few suppliers might be there and some of the components will be very much easily available are to mil jata hai aise okay for example um, tata when it is buying engine from fiat then only fiat knows how which kind of engine tata wants so tata cannot uh, tell acha fiat if you are not giving we'll go to uh, mercedes will buy engine from them that will not work only fiat knows how uh, how engine uh, what kind of engine tata needs if tata just wants to end the contract it will be very difficult because the ending of contract and starting contract with someone other um, some other company it will take time it will take energy it will it will involve a huge cost 
सो इट कैन नॉट जस्ट ठीक है यहाँ नहीं मिल रहे तो इधर जा सकते हैं इट इज नॉट बाइंग टूथपेस्ट ओके इफ आई एम नॉट गेटिंग इन वन शॉप आई गो टू अनदर शॉप द बाइंग ऑफ इंजिन द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इज क्वाइट एन इम्पॉर्टेंट डील फॉर दैट मैटर इफ आई एम बाइंग सम नट्स स्क्रूज बोल्ट्स ऑफ कार्स ओके इफ वन सप्लायर इज नॉट सप्लाइंग आई गो टू अनदर सप्लायर I I may have three or four suppliers for me for supplying of those nuts and bolts. They are not that important, and we have many suppliers for that. Okay, वो specific kind of nut or bolt ऐसा कुछ नहीं है. That I'll that will be available with many suppliers. So some of the parts of the uh, products will be important when I am sourcing from outside, and some of the uh, parts of the product will not that be important when I am sourcing it from outside. So if there are more suppliers. There is less supply risk. बहुत सारे suppliers हैं. Supply risk is low. When there are very few suppliers or one or two suppliers, then the supply risk will be very high. Okay. And also it will hamper the value of purchase. Okay. Value of purchase also we need to consider because some of the products will be very less costly and some of the products will be much more costly. Okay. If you focus on this kind of a table, uh, you can. explain so this is the my supply risk on the y axis kind of a y axis supply risk supply risk is high over here that means very few suppliers are there supply risk is low that means too many suppliers are there bahut sare suppliers hai if i if one or two suppliers get angry and uh, don't do business with me then uh, then also it is it will be fine i have too many suppliers in the market in this case the supplier are very few one or two or three or maybe okay this x axis shows that it's a purchasing value value of the product okay value of the product is very low okay saste mein hai product in this in these two quadrants value of the product is very high here okay supply risk is low over here in the on in bottom at the top the supply risk is very high so uh, so we get four quadrants are you okay Okay. okay so we get these four quadrants uh, with okay take a one minute break let him go okay ठीक है सप्लाई रिस्क इज लो एंड द परचेसिंग वैल्यू इज लो इट कैन बी नट्स एंड बोल्ट्स रूटीन प्रोडक्ट्स लार्ज वैरायटी ऑफ प्रोडक्ट्स आर देयर ओके इफ सप्लाई रिस्क इज लो एंड द परचेसिंग वैल्यू इज हाई ओके द परचेसिंग वैल्यू इज हाई बट द सप्लाई रिस्क इज लो दिस कैन बी कंसीडर एज अ मे बी टायर्स फॉर द कंपनी बिकॉज इफ इट इज अ मे बी अ फोर और फाइव लैक रुपी कार देन टायर्स मे कॉस्ट समवेयर अराउंड थर्टी टू फोर्टी थाउजेंड मे बी टेन परसेंट okay so 10% of the car but we have many tire suppliers okay high cost hai 10% of the car is just for uh, just for those products maybe tires 40 to 50000 mein aa jayenge tires for a 5 lakh of cars so it is costing somewhere 10% of the car value but we have many car uh, many tire suppliers okay if we do if apollo gets angry then we'll go to maybe michelin or maybe jk tires okay so that's the thing when there are many suppliers nuts and bolts and tires so if we go up okay supply risk is very high we ha will have a bottleneck products and strategic product okay in this uh, we can consider uh, like if for bottleneck we can consider it as the engine of the car of tata without engine we cannot have uh, anything we can make the entire body and all the stuffs and we can keep our cars but if we don't get engine we'll be in a bottleneck that that is we'll be having much more products in line just to assemble the engine okay because the engine is, uh, engine assembly has not yet arrived so we'll have a bottleneck or else strategic products okay very important products uh, for maybe for cars something like electronic products are very important and the supply there will be very less suppliers also for that so this is how our st sourcing strategy of portfolio approach looks like okay and also if we do like this this is the routine products where the parts are more nuts and bolts bahut chahiye number of nuts and bolts for a cars 
are very huge quantity but the purchasing power is low purchasing price is low okay leverage ka only 2 to 5% of the car only four tires are there only five tires are there but they cost 10% of the products strategic products uh, again very less electronic parts only one ac will be there one uh, music system will be there okay very few parts will be there but the purchasing volume will be pretty high and uh, bottleneck products only 10 to 15% of the car part and uh, purchasing volume will be also very low volume okay not the value purchasing volume will be very low only one engine for a car okay and it on 10 to 15% of the car how uh, we can say that the sourcing so sourcing mein when we are taking something from outside when we are outsource and we are taking something from outside what products are important for us what product will be a routine product simple products hai more suppliers hai less suppliers hai for which kind of product okay so that is what uh, we are going to uh, we are seeing in this okay sourcing strategy mein for not every product which is coming from outside is important nor every product is not that important so we need to classify in such a ठीक है एक था देन ही डाउट्स ओके सो मे बी वन और टू थिंग्स विल डू लेट्स सी ठीक है आई ठीक है वॉलमार्ट अगेन इट केम बट इट हैज फेल्ड इन इंडिया ओके नॉट या आई कैन से फेल्ड ओके दैट्स द रीजन आई हैव पुट अ क्वेश्चन मार्क whether it has failed or not you know uh, before what uh, take it again okay so walmart if you imagine if you have seen any photo of walmart yeah, yeah you have seen many photos in my slides as well but if you see a walmart through a long term perspective oh, bahut dur se dekhenge from a top view what the civil engineers called the orthographic view har upar se dekhenge then you will see a walmart store a big a huge stores मे बी फोर और फाइव टाइम्स बिकर दैन बिग बाजार उतना बड़ा स्टोर रहता है एंड इन फ्रंट ऑफ दैट स्टोर मेनी कार्स विल बी पार्ट एज इफ इट्स कार गो डाउन ओके सो द कंसेप्ट ऑफ वॉलमार्ट इज वील हैव अ ह्यूज स्टोर एंड द साइज ऑफ द स्टोर द लैंड एरिया ऑफ द स्टोर जितना है ना थ्री टाइम्स द लैंड एरिया ऑफ द स्टोर विल बी फॉर रिजर्व फॉर पार्किंग बिकॉज एज पीपल विल कम टू बाय इन बल्क okay they'll be they'll be bringing their cars so that they can put that bulk uh, materials in the car okay and many people will buy uh, will come to buy not just a single person from a family okay maybe a husband wife and children all will come to walmart to buy because all will have certain needs so everyone will buy for maybe for an entire month or two and they'll take those two or three trolleys and dump all the things all the stuff into their cars so so that's the reason walmart need a huge space bahut bada jagah chahiye walmart ke liye so but in india what happens is generally walmart and all those kind of stuff is generally preferred in the cities okay whenever uh, something is coming from foreign countries generally those those foreign companies generally focus on the metro cities so walmart also tried to Uh, open their stores in mumbai or bangalore and maybe in kolkata in hyderabad the main thing in our metro cities is also we don't have any space okay mumbai mein you have to build a vertical walmart in that case okay mumbai mein bhi space is, space nahi hai and parking ke liye three times the space is required so we don't have any space so walmart now it has an excellent supply chain management agreed but it cannot open its stores in metro cities in mumbai and for that matter any metro uh, very very well metro city throughout the world any big city throughout the world it cannot open its stores because it needs a huge land space so that's the reason walmart is uh, walmart has entered india but it cannot open its any stores so walmart is now opening like best price okay and also very few best price you can see you don't have in karnataka in maharashtra even in mumbai it is it doesn't have it's in a city called aurangabad in the central part of maharashtra we have a best price 
it is it uh, it is not called as walmart okay walmart has a collaboration collaborative partnership with bharti okay so it is a bharti walmart so bharti walmart owns a best price okay in this also they are same way which the walmart or the big bazaar businesses into so they are doing that same thing but it is not that uh, picking up in india and even nowadays uh, walmart walmart karke fayda nahi hai because the brick and mortar stores are very difficult to it is very difficult for them to sustain because online retailing has been started and because of this covid situation from past two years we are more uh, buying online rather than going out and buying it even nowadays uh, we are buying stuff but definitely we are not going outside we are not buying furniture from outside or electronic items from outside definitely not books and many of the groceries also we are ordering it on online okay so offline this brick and mortar stores are will be not the future of the world okay so walmart had a good supply chain but it may not be a future of the world same goes for dell which we were discussing dell bhi hai which is which is the excellent kind of a supply chain it had we have seen videos and we have i have explained you much more about dell okay dell ka bhi the best thing is we can customize anything okay we can order it on the phone but even dell which was uh, excellent has an excellent supply chain has a customized product offering to the customers but they have limited technology nowadays we don't definitely no one uh, will have a pc in their home okay maybe uh, one or two out of 50 people will have a pc in their home okay but 10 out of 10 people will be having a mobile phone in their home okay just the uh, the pers- the children who are below 18 may not have a cell phone for themselves but at least jiske jo bhi 18 ke upar hai who is going to a college who is going to office everyone has a cell phone and dell doesn't manufacture cell phones so because of the uh, l- l- what do you say lagging behind in the technology dell is somewhat going out of the market but dell PCs and Dell laptops are still there in the market, but their market share are going down because public uh, public is focusing more on uh, mobile phones because everything the mobile phone is giving. Now uh, we as it is again online. So when project work, uh, my students is sending the project work to check. They are um, editing their project work on not on PCs. They are editing the project work on mobile phones. Okay, so even making of those project works, the word document, the PDF, everything is being done on mobile phones itself. We don't require laptops for that. So that is the reason Dell is also facing some problems. It is going out to the market because the technology is changing. For to but to study supply chain, we had to analyze what Walmart, how Walmart gives, how Toyota uh, gives the offering, how Dell gives the offering. But nowadays, as the technology is changing. the supply chain management is also changing so because of that now uh, walmart and demart uh, big bazaar dell computers toyota they are also reviving okay when walmart has purchased flipkart okay so walmart wanted to enter into online business okay they could not start uh, their walmart online store okay so better than that they acquired flipkart and whatever online business flipkart is doing the walmart is getting profit out of it so they have realized that online is the thing moving forward okay so this was the case why walmart didn't click in india because of lack of space basically and uh, and online also and also dell so this uh, i'll just give a brief about this supplier selection and then we'll wind up uh, and the remaining things we'll do it in the next class okay 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 in supplier selection uh, see as per the what do you say as far as your syllabus goes okay we have completed this much yeah 
can complete this much. So supplier selection, contract negotiation, creating a world class supplier base, supplier development, worldwide sourcing. This is remaining. As per the size goes, we have completed half of the module. Okay, but I have told many things uh, from here as well. Oh, sorry. Yeah, here as well. Itna ho chuka. This much is remaining here as well. So maybe uh, in the next class I'll be completing. I'll just give a brief about uh, about this today, and even this. Okay. So let's begin. I'll share with you this PPT to today itself, and maybe some of the notes. Okay, how to select a supplier and why it is important. So, ये supplier on what basis a company will select. ठीक है. Now, when you see a second module, start imagining कि what is there in the second module. Okay, whether uh, what what is a make or what is a buy decision. When we will make the product, when we will buy the product. Why we will do that? Uh, for what we will do that? क्यों करना है? okay and when we will do it and which things we will outsource what is our core process okay core process that we will uh, keep it near to us okay the remaining process we will outsource which is the core process how to identify it we know all that okay what can be outsourced and why we need to outsource because of and what are the cost involved if we manufacture in house or we'll give it to outside what kind of uh, contracts we need to build what kind of uh, problems can arise in making contracts with that and then what kind of products are there if we give it to supplier what kind of products are coming some are important products some are not that important products some are very uh, supplier risky only one or two suppliers are there uh, to supply so they are that risky to kya hai basically okay so ये सब थिंग एंड फाइनली वी गो टू सप्लायर सिलेक्शन ओके विच सप्लायर टू सिलेक्ट देर आर सपोज फाइव और सिक्स सप्लायर्स इन द मार्केट तो एटलीस्ट आई मैक्सिम आई टेक टू सप्लायर्स फॉर दैट वन प्रोडक्ट ओके इफ वन सप्लायर इज फेलिंग आई कैन रन अन अदर सप्लायर बिकॉज इफ ओनली वन सप्लायर इज देयर इट विल बी वेरी रिस्की फॉर माई बिजनेस इफ समथिंग हैपन्स ओवर देयर ओके जस्ट फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ आई एम हैविंग अ फैक्ट्री इन कर्नाटका एंड माई सप्लायर इज Uh, is in uh, Tamil Nadu, okay. And if there is some uh, some water logging or flooding is happening in Tamil Nadu where my factory is there, then they cannot supply me the products. They cannot manufacture the products, and they cannot deliver it on time. So my uh, product assembly will uh, be standstill because there is flood happening in my supplier's region. Okay, so it will be very risky if I have only one supplier. If I have a supplier, one from Tamil Nadu, one from maybe Maharashtra, one from Telangana, then it will be very easy. So, on what basis I select the supplier is what uh, I'll discuss. Okay. Okay. Process and product technologies. Okay. Based on what technology my supplier has. Okay. On basis of that, I'll do. okay now the tata doesn't know how to manufacture engine so the technology is there with fiat so tata is sourcing the engine from fiat zara our cloth apparel has technologies but uh, it has a good um, what do you say the designing and the creative uh, creative thing is there from the european side so it uh, the designer clothes and um, fashionable fa fancy clothes which the zara sells it is sourcing from europe okay and the remaining uh, white white t-shirts yeah for a simple kind of clothes they are sourcing from asian countries okay so on the basis of what i need on the basis of what technology the supplier has on the basis of that i'll select the supplier okay and willingness to share technologies and information okay if i am not that reluctant that if my technology gets uh, shared it will be a leakage problem or um, what to say matlab and there will be no problems if i tell my new product design or, uh, or my cost effective design to my supplier 
then there will be no problem and he can uh, share the information of, uh, with us how to develop it okay i can involve him into designing and if that is the case then definitely i'll go with that supplier jiske paas knowledge bhi hai who can, who is ready to share information even if i share my technology nothing will happen nothing gets leakaged so as per that i can select a supplier okay you know uh, how tata ke trucks are that uh, good because uh, long back maybe 50 60 years back tata had a uh, supplier which was mercedes okay not benz okay just mercedes so mercedes and tata had a collaboration that uh, they mercedes will teach tata how to manufacture trucks what kind of technology is involved into trucks and in turn tata will sell those trucks in india okay and the profit will be shared by both of them okay so that that was the case and it was getting pretty much well okay mercedes was uh, mm, what do you say uh, teaching tata how to make trucks and they were developing engines together for indian climate for indian weather we they were developing new engines new trucks uh, new kind of uh, suspension uh, so everything was going fine and tata was focusing more on sales of the trucks in the in, uh, in the indian market but later on tata realized that we can we ourselves can manufacture the trucks why we need mercedes we know what what how the trucks to be manufactured how the engines to be manufactured sab kuch seekh liya mercedes se then they told bye bye to mercedes now we now we'll do it now we'll do on our own that is a very risky one okay when <laughs> the mercedes is selecting a supplier okay as a tata initially there was uh, it was not in kind of illegal thing which happened long back then later on the suppliers and the relationships uh, got changed and the contracts got changed and some things the other companies is was keeping secret okay whenever a uh, kind of just a hero honda ka joint venture hai so honda will know how to manufacture the engine they will not inform hero how they are how certain things uh, are uh, putting it into the engine and the bikes okay so they'll keep some something as secret okay so they'll share they'll share the information but some things will be kept secret very much by the supplier or by the company okay next thing quality if my if my supplier is giving me good quality definitely i'll go with that go with him okay again the cost if the cost is low i'll go for supplier i we have seen in the graph if the cost is low for buying decision i'll go with uh, go with that i'll not manufacture it in house and reliability okay whenever i tell uh, i the product should be available as per the contracts okay there should not be a delay or a damaged product or a error product okay if i have said some specification some line some length some width some weight of the product some finishing of the product it should be there like that okay it should my supplier should be reliable and the order system and the cycle time okay when i have said something that it should come every week on monday okay its cycle time is uh, like that then it should come like that and if i request them monday ko nahi chahiye sunday ko chahiye i want an early delivery if my supplier is flexible that uh, in that way then i'll be very much happy so i'll select a kind of a supplier which is flexible for my requirement because you have one thing like just in time which was again developed by toyota just in time mein kya hai i'll just give a phone call uh, or else i just give an order to my suppliers immediately those products will come and within no time i'll assemble it okay and i'll deliver the product like i said for the toyota it gets assembled in 16 minutes one toyota so 16 minutes mein you imagine itna bada car it gets assembled within just 16 minutes because toyota has kept a relationship with the suppliers in such a way that once it is ordered within no time okay that's the reason they are called just in time just in time they'll uh, the suppliers will come up with their components and deliver to the toyota assembly point and at the assembly point immediately within 16 minutes uh, the car will be ready okay so that is the kind of a relationship and the order system and the cycle time they have developed they have developed a new kind of a supply chain system itself 
with the supplier okay then the capacity definitely whatever i am telling them if i am telling the 1000 units 10000 units 50000 units they should have that capacity okay if i want to assemble my products and i want to i want to deliver 50000 units i need 50000 parts from my supplier as well so they should have the capacity to build that 50000 immediately build karke mereko dena hai so they should have a capacity and finally you know communication capability okay calls pe hai ya fir online hai how i'll come to know theek okay. hai all those things communication so based on that so based on all these eight points or nine points basically the location where the supplier is situated so based on that eight or nine points we'll select which kind of supplier we need okay so this was ah, and also service okay theek hai theek hai how many suppliers to use okay so this uh, suppliers how many to use what are the reason for if i have a single supplier or a multiple supplier what is the thing okay and finally about the tesla motors uh, where in india could succeed in india or not and some of the purchasing decision global sourcing counted rate okay this is what is remaining um, for the for this module so maybe i'll complete it in the next class definitely maybe ne 1 2 3 4 5 6 seven seven slides are there so maybe i'll complete it in the next class definitely i'll be completing it this in next class and so next class will be technically my last class all we'll see so after next class maybe uh, another professor will come and teach you Uh, the next module onwards okay so let's see whether i can teach that third module half of third module or let's see what will happen okay so so let's close this meeting i hope everyone has written good morning in the chat box it was recorded theek okay. hai no doubts will end it okay chalo students good day see you thank you everyone thank you everyone